I hate to say it to y'all, but um, newsflash, there's no such thing as cultural appropriation of gay culture. Bear, I said it. What's going on out there? This is Venus Love back with another video. Yes, I'm back and I'm here to talk about something very interesting that I ran across today. Um, I did have a lot of other videos in mind, you know, like about Shawn Mendes, about the lesbian master died, all those really interesting controversial topics that are frequenting the queer community. But I found this one to be the most intriguing. And it was about cultural appropriation of gay culture. So the recent conversation surrounding cultural appropriation happened because just recently, a straight person was cast on RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes, naturally many queer people were up in arms because they felt as if a straight person is being rewarded an opportunity into queer spaces and thus appropriating LGBTQ plus culture or gay culture as they call it. One queer person expressed exasperation, in particular at queer white people being dragged for wearing a kimono while straight people get to be celebrated for being in drag. You know and they wanted to know where we draw the line at cultural appropriation you know the irony of this expression is that the person is upset that some white drag queens got called out for cultural appropriation while the straight person is being celebrated for what they believe is cultural appropriation but anyway i feel like i have to address this comment and and comments like it because i hear so many people within the lgbtq plus spaces using this phrase to describe the ways in which straight people try to adopt things that are or were traditionally recognized as gay into heteronormative culture. For those of you who don't know, cultural appropriation is typically when the dominant group adopts cultural aspects from a marginalized or oppressed group, thus distorting the image of said culture and claiming credit for its origin. This isn't the first time the term cultural appropriation has been used to describe, you know, straight people taking from gay culture or white people taking from black culture, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube that use the term cultural appropriation to describe, you know, when corporations adopt queer things into media or in regards to queer baiting, right? Needless to say, I recognize how frustrating it is to create a space for yourself only for it to be hijacked by a dominant majority group. I myself am queer and non-binary so I understand that there's a need to point out when straight people are taking aspects of queer culture or invading the space for queer people or taking opportunities from queer people in a space that was created by queer people. However, as a black person, I'm here to tell you that that is not cultural appropriation. And cultural appropriation is not your struggle if you are queer and white. Okay? Let me explain this. Let me explain this before y'all get up and arms. Because this comment does bring up a good point. Where do we draw the line with cultural appropriation? First, let's start off with discussing what cultural appropriation's origins are. So the phrase originated in the 1980s. And the purpose of the academic discussion surrounding it was focused on colonialism and the treatment of non-white cultures. It was a term made for people who were essentially colonized by white people and whose culture was hijacked and made to fit the white narrative. What is ironic is a lot of the gay white people using this term are actually performing appropriation or misappropriation, as is another term. They're taking a term meant to define an experience that only those in colonized nations could experience and applying it to gay culture. That's a problem. And let's talk about some aspects of gay culture, shall we? Let's, let's discuss this. Let's talk about drag as an example. While cross-dressing has existed for many years, the first person to ever refer to themselves as a drag queen was a black man named William Dorsey Swan. William Dorsey Swan 
is the mother of drag, as he so famously called himself. The irony of all this is that he was born enslaved, and he started hosting drag balls in Washington, D.C. in the 1800s, which was attended by other men who were once enslaved. Of course, he was subjugated to, you know, racial profiling and the drag balls were attacked by police and he was tried for, you know, in doing indecent things, you know, just being gay and black. Um, and obviously it didn't end well for the drag balls. However, do you know how drag became so popular among white people? Why do blackface, of course? Drag during the minstrel days was a way for white men to make fun of black femininity, and this soon translated to vaudeville shows, which was when drag started to be even more connected with gay people. Yeah, that, that's, that's the interesting part about that. So as black people and immigrants began to influx, you know, New York City, the big cities, vaudeville shows became inspired by their music, their dance, and their comedy, hoping to evolve drag from the minstrel days into a brand new art form. So to make a long story short, drag balls were created by black people who used to be slaves and were hijacked by white people to make fun of them. Right, so now perhaps the solution, if we were to go by this strained history, would be to withhold white and straight people from the drag space, right? But I'm sure when this person made this comment, they did not intend for it to include white people who appropriated from black queer people and basically act as if it's theirs to claim or control how it is performed. Not to mention white drag queens dominate that space, even though black people initially started drag. The irony. But, but, again, this is about straight people. The key thing here is that one is cultural appropriation, though and the other is not. The appropriation of drag from black communities in order to mock our existence is cultural appropriation. The distortion of our queer expression as a colonized group of people is cultural appropriation. The fact that a straight man is doing drag is only appropriation if it involves the aspect of colonization. To be frank, straight white people have not colonized gay white people. Gay white people were not enslaved by straight white people in America. While queer white people did experience oppression by straight white people, it was not through colonization. This is important to understand when you say straight people are culturally appropriating gay culture. Because the reason why a white person wearing a kimono is cultural, cultural appropriation is different from the reason why a straight person wearing drag is not. Okay? A white person wearing kimono is different from a straight person wearing drag. Let's get that out there. To add, kimonos have different meaning to Japanese people than drag does to queer black people. Drag was always an expression of gender nonconformity of all kinds, not just involving sexuality, not to mention it was a way for black people to poke holes in white societal standards. So drag racing is not just rooted in queer culture. There's a black element to it as well. The drag race is made for people who do not conform to societal notions of gender in general. Therefore, a straight person joining the race is not really cult culturally appropriating that side of the culture no more than a gay white man is, <laughs> okay? So it's, I find it kind of weird and ironic that it's a lot of gay white men upset that a straight white man is appropriating a culture that isn't really even theirs to begin with. But whatever. The point is, cultural appropriation is not the term we use to describe the situation. I mean, to be frank, the conversations around appropriating gets messy because you're using terms focused on colonization. We probably need a different term to define the experiences of straight people getting opportunities or praise over queer people in the same spaces. But cultural appropriation is not the term for it. 
I mean, we we need to maybe call them space invaders or something. I don't know. Alien invaders. I don't I don't know what we need to find a different term. Anyway, if we're going to make a term to exclude someone, you also must at least understand the purpose of the culture in which you are claiming ownership of. Okay? The purpose of drag is to express femininity in a society that elevates traditional masculinity. This is why drag is an exaggerated expression of femininity and female gendered roles. It is meant to be a way to own one's femininity, okay, or reclaim ownership of that. While it has been most associated and embraced by gay men, it has also been explored by trans people, non-binary people, asexuals, and even cisgender straight women exaggerating their own sense of femininity. Drag is a form of entertainment meant to poke holes in the illusion of gender roles and mock the structures that minimize femininity. Therefore, a straight man doing drag means that the purpose of drag is being fulfilled. More importantly, drag is meant to poke holes in the white structures. That is the purpose. And then herein lies another problem with excluding straight people from drag and the whole notion behind cultural appropriation. Sexuality and gender is fluid, okay? It's not like race. Unlike race or ethnicity, the label of a person's sexuality could change tomorrow, okay? Sure, this person is cis and straight for now, but what if this person is attempting to explore their sexuality and gender through drag? What if they're questioning? It's strange to, on one hand, encourage people to explore their sexuality and gender, but then on the other hand, condemn them when they try to. It's like, um, go explore your sexuality. You, you might think you're straight, but you might not be. You never know unless you try. But then when they actually, okay, let me go and explore my sexuality. Let me go put on drag and let me go explore my gender expression to see what fits. Suddenly you're mad about that. It, it's weird. To be honest, having a straight person there will not take anything away from the richest men in the world, which actually happen to be gay white men. Yeah. If anything, it is a result of the progress queer people have made. The fact that straight men are starting to feel more comfortable expressing their femininity is a good thing and can help to alleviate some of the stigma surrounding male femininity. But of course, this is only a good thing so long as queer people, especially black queer people, do get their fair share of the things they have worked hard to create. And that I do not take away from. That I can agree with. We need to get what we worked for. But I don't think straight people need to be excluded from the space. No. Not unless you want to go down that rabbit hole and we go down the layers and layers of people who are actually appropriating from the top. Right? Because personally, I'm not against white people wearing even African-American stuff. Like, I'm African-American. I'm not against white people partaking in African-American events or culture or anything like that. Nor am I against straight people participating in drag race. I'm, I'm queer, I'm black, I'm not against this. The only time I care is when they don't give credit where it's due, right? Or when the minority group does not have an equal share at the tables they create. But I do understand the fear, you know, of having, you know, your space dominated by the majority. After all, drag race was started by black people black queer people at that and is dominated by white queer people now you know that's the lived experience of being a black queer person and it can be frustrating at the same time though i don't think barring white queer people or straight people from drag is the answer it's impossible anyway what i think needs to be done is that we need to attack the issue from a different angle here's the thing we need to accept that white cis het men may involve themselves in queer culture. However, we need to focus on elevating queer people within those spaces. We must accept that queer white men will be a part of the culture, but elevate people of color within those spaces. We need to accept queer men, both white and of color, will partake in traditionally feminine spaces, but focus on elevating the women and AFAB people in those spaces who have to live with the gender role forced upon them every single day. 
Within each layer of privilege, we need to understand that those at the bottom help to keep the tower stable. But rather than attacking the top of the tower, we need to sustain the bottom layer. That's where the focus should be. And I think people are so focused on the fact that a straight person's in RuPaul's Drag Race that they're actually becoming their own undoing. Their outrage is actually giving more attention to the straight person than the predominantly queer cast of drag racers who are probably going to be just as phenomenal if not more so see that's what happens when you're focused at the wrong angle and so that's what i really want to talk about i really wanted to discuss how cultural appropriation is being misused and why the idea behind it being applied to the gay community can get really messy. <laughs> and mainly because it was never meant to be for the gay community to begin with. But again, I digress. Thank you for watching this video. I'm always eager to see y'all's opinion in the comment section. So go ahead and leave me comments on your perspective. If you would like this video. I'd appreciate a like if you don't. I, hey, well, you can't see dislike, so not that that really matters, but I I did want to discuss it. And in the future, I'll probably be discussing more about these interesting, controversial, queer topics. Y'all have a good evening. Peace.